I'd first like to thank Hi-Fi Girl for sending the Chimera BDO 5 to a Pro or 5 Pro to us and for being so patient because it took quite a long time shipping shipping took a lot like a long long time like a lot of time because of the problems in the expedition but thankfully it got to us um, and we can proceed to the review and I would like to appreciate the massive balls of Hi-Fi Go for sending for sending a Kynira IM to us because Kynira has been like releasing quite a few questionable IMs. So these are, these are pretty interesting. So and we have been shitting on a lot. I mean, a lot of IMs before, like the. The SSRs, the SSPs, the uh, what call it, the Q6. I mean, when I review an IM, if I don't like the IM, I'm gonna say that they're like the worst shit as <laughs> well. Because I kind of like a lot of sound signature. I don't really have that type of. Oh yeah, I like this sound signature, and I don't like it. I, like everything else is wrong. But if it's shit, I'm gonna tell him you like it. It is shit, like absolute garbage. I was gonna say that. And the first time I I listened to the Kanye RPD 5 I first thought that holy shit, this is garbage. Like this is garbage. But after like. A few more hours of listening, I, I noticed like they actually have a very solid resolution, and the tuning isn't as bad as I first listened. It's like a shock factor, like it's a shock. It's like a wow factor, but negatively wow, <laughs> negatively wows you. It's like an iron that you need to sell in before. The this, in my opinion, is a niche. It's about like fifty dollars in price. I I think in this price range, this can be considered as a niche because this reminds me of a few days ago. I when I was looking for my IR, I like my top end IMs. I'm looking for probably the IR C1R. I tried a lot of top of the line IMs, and I a lot of them are absolute crap, absolute bullshit. I'm got I'm gonna rant every single day if I'm gonna review every single of those IMs. Like no question, a lot of high end IMs, like top end IMs, are absolutely garbage technically and tonal uh, tonally but I came across onto an IM called the Dita Dream and it rubs me on a it sounds kind of weird to me because they they don't have the best tonality they do not sound correct I guess they don't they don't have the best tonality and timbre like timbre representation because they have shit tonality but what they're good at is their technical aspect like their resolution the detail their their just sheer amount of resolution is astounding to me that I would like to forgive a lot of the problems in the tone, in the tuning. Their the texture, the bass is amazing. Their their sound stage, while not being the widest, but it's it's deep and expansive. It's it's a very ex, it's a very weird um, experience trying them out. So yeah. With the D with the Chimera BD 
5 Pro, it kind of low keys. It's, it's. I think the boost in the treble here is them trying to create a, a sense of detail in the IM. Because this sounds defined, like the, the sound here sounds, the definition, the hit, the attack is, the transience is, is pretty good, though I could, I could hear like a lot of, uh, no, some of the um, inconsist inconsistencies of the, like inco incoherencies of the uh, drivers, two different drivers here, but they're fairly okay, I guess. But the tuning here is just KZs. If you're looking for a K, maybe maybe if you're looking for a KZ IM and you, and you don't want to waste your money on a fucking KZ, because most of them are shit. Some of them are pretty okay, but most of them are shit. Um, this might be a good choice because for a while these don't have the muddy, like thick, slow, incoherent bass. It doesn't have that type of deep bass though. It 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 retains the KZ signature of the 2K, 4K, and 8K like bumps. Though with the Chimera, you kind of put like half of the 2K peak and put them in the 8K. So it's it's pretty sibilant if you if you if you. It's a it's pretty sibilant, but it's not. It's not really quite like KZ. Okay, that's a TLDR. For the box I got, here is the box. Um, what's inside the box? Nothing much. Like these used to cover the, the fucking dry, uh, IM. You got like some kind of manual, of course. Of course, every single IM needs a manual. You don't. <sighs> Like, of course, it's pretty fucking obvious that you need a manual with an IEM. And you also get this, these type of ear tips. I think I dropped one. Yeah, the tips here is very peculiar. It's very short. It's kind of like if you've had a uh, a Shozy, Shozy IEM, like the newer Shozy, Shozy Neo BGN, BGN up, you'll have these uh, type of short ear tips which is pretty cool, but I don't like them because they don't fit me very well. So I'm using the Sony hybrid ear tips, which kind of tames up the 8K. So yeah, kind of tames up the treble. Nothing else. The cable here is fantastic, even though you're, you have a microphone in the cable. Which I don't really like because I don't use the microphones in the cable. The cable here is soft. It's it's not the blonde shitty cable. It it doesn't retain its form or it doesn't jank or anything. Like Zeos usually like to say it's, it doesn't jank. And the shell is shaped like your ear, like CIM type of shell. It's pretty it's it's fairly comfortable. Uh, maybe for smaller ears you might have a problem, but for my huge Sasquatch ears, no problem is found. Okay, now for the sound quality. For the bass, the bass is not, sadly, even though this is a very V-shaped headphone, the bass is not that deep. It has bass, but it's quite the lighter, more... It ha it ha you definitely see that it is an elevated bass, but it's not that hard hitting solid type of bass. I it might sometimes feel kinda of hollow, but it is better than the muddy mess of the KZs, the ZS10 Pros. Or the muddy maze of mess of the blondes. So yeah. Even though they don't dig as deep as I would prefer them to be, they are still good enough, I guess. 
the texture of the base due to not being as dynamic i guess that's it's it's not being it's due to it's not being as dynamic it's it's not that apparent like it's not that strong in the texture department either so yeah but definitely still elevated the mid range here is is a is a crap fest of shit the mid range here is a crap fest of shit <laughs> i guess i guess that's a way to say it it has a pretty recessed dip like Obviously, V shaped would have a dip right there, uh, and male vocals tend to sound a bit hollow, in my opinion. Though the female vocals sounds extremely, extremely forward. It's like not even close. When I'm listening to to Chantal Chamberland in the, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I think it's Chantal Chamberland. I don't care if I'm wrong. Um, Temptation on the album. Temptation. I I I I played this album like on a lot of these I am to test for a deeper, huskier type of female sound. It um when he go when she goes a bit higher in the notes, she gets closer <laughs> to the mic. Like I I would give you an example. When she speaks the lower note, she would sound like she's speaking from here. Like right now, while you're hearing my voice right now. But when she gets to the higher notes, she will get closer and closer to the mic. And that's it, yeah. And it is very noticeable too. The imbalance, the, 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 the whole shit is, imba is very noticeable when you listen to a female vocal. Male vocals tend to be on a um, in a correct place, I guess, and it's not that forward, it's not that backward, though it might sound a little bit hollow. So I don't really like prefer them for male vocals. However, the female vocals is quite a bit thick, like in, in their in their presentation too. It's not, it's it's just very, 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 very very close to you very very loud i mean i can turn it the sound down like a lot like 10 steps and the female vocal still sounds kind of shouty so that's if you really like your female vocals maybe 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 but i don't know but i don't so yeah instruments kind of take kind of just taking the back seat when the vocal is present so I guess that's that. The treble here is boosted. It's fucking boosted. It's it's not the type of the messy type of grainy treble. It's relatively smooth in its definition, but it's not 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 forward. <laughs> so it's very forward. Especially the AK region, so the sibilance region, honestly, it's, it tends to get sibilant here. It doesn't have that compression qualities of the, it doesn't have like the, that distortion in the uh, 5K region, probably it doesn't, it doesn't have that, but it has that type of extra forwardness. In the treble, it may contribute to the detail retrieval. I, I will get to the detail retrieval later. And yeah, the treble air, however, you would notice a significant roll off. It's not, it's not very significant. It's, it's like a noticeable roll off in the treble air, where you 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 might lose a bit of the resolution up there. So yeah. So both extension like treble and bass is not very fantastic here, but yeah, but I already mentioned before that the tuning kind of suck. So about the technicalities, the the, the tonality and, and timbre first. I, I would like to explain the tonality and timbre. The timbre maybe later. The tonality is is garbage. 
like this hot garbage. The the detail retrieval here, however, everything sounds very tight, very clean, very clear sounding, I guess. Especially for an IMS disc right? It's it sounds about as clean as probably the Hazard Sound Hot Mirror. Maybe this is a bit more resolving, but it sounds clean like that. It sounds also like it's it sounds cleaner than the iBus IT00. It sounds cleaner than the Blonde O1s. Definitely more than these two. So yeah, it's, it sounds clean. It's kind of leaning to the brighter side of the spectrum, maybe because of maybe maybe it's because of that. It sounds kind of cleaner, and um, you will hear a lot of the finite details also here with the uh, Kinear IBD05 Pro. You have that. The stage, however, is also pretty impressive in my opinion in the height it can generate a bit of height maybe to the boosted upper mid range in the 4k region it can generate that with uh, the, a lot of the VBL vocals though the width is fairly average I guess so yeah um, imaging is about average too. I don't know, maybe maybe a little lower than average. Yeah, I'm just gonna say they are pretty average in imaging. Um, their timbre, their timbre is kind of BA like dry timbre. It's not very pleasant in my opinion. You would notice there is a DD and a BA here. Definitely, you would. Because the coherency here is not that good. I mean, you would notice the difference. Like you hear the smearing of the DBA timbre up there. It's not like the type of a very solid BA like the um, uh, Moondrop S8. I just got a loaner for that, and I uh, maybe the, maybe the review is coming soon for that. Their, their B, the, the BA timbre here is distinctively very VA. So you got that going for these. And contrasting them with the uh, uh, a, a more dynamic driver type of sound in the lower frequencies, you would have a not very realistic timbre presentation and that also is because of the whack tonality so maybe that's that so yeah i guess that's it for this now for the comparison against the tinty twos i would still take the tinty twos but this have a bit wider sound stage i would i i prefer the tuning here also However, in uh, a brighter type of female vocals, maybe a soprano, maybe I would the the, the treble on the Tinty Two would would kind of annoy me, like the upper treble. I I don't think it works on all sopranos. It 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 definitely works with V with this one, like a uh, uh, Olivia Ong. She has a very high high voice which is a bit kind of raspy I like yeah she has a very high high voice which has a bit of a texture to them that's kind of annoying here but I don't hear any problem in the kind era the Detail retrieval is very similar. I would I would say that the tin T2s is better in the um, treble region and the mid range. However, the bass detail due to the lack of texture in the tin T2s, I would still prefer in the Kinera. However, you'll you'll hear that the impact of the bass, like the quality of the impact, the, the dynamics of the bass, is better on the tin T2s. 
the uh, Hussey Sound Heart Mirror, I would still prefer the Hussey Sound Mirror because of the first of all the tuning overall, it's more agreeable to me. Um, it's not as hollow in the bass, yet they sound about as detailed overall. The iBass IT00 would be um, a contender in the sound stage, but it is noticeably uh, noticeably wider, though not by much, in the iBasso, but a bit taller here in the Chimera. The tuning is, while the uh, iBasso have a very laid back vocals, especially in the female vocals, has qu uh, quite a take a quite taken a bit of the backseat region. However, in, in the um, Chimera BD05, it's just goes through the hood like <laughs> the, the the female vocal just goes through the roof and then yeah against a blonde a once this has a more cleaner presentation it's not as muddy it's not as how do you call it like bloated type of sound It is much more controlled here in the bass. However, the treble region, I, I notice a bit of a grain in the Blono ones. The here's just sibilant. It's just, just sibilant. Don't, just don't, just, just don't. You can see image 755. I would prefer the image 755 tuning. However, the, the, the technicality aspect is much stronger in the Chimera, in my opinion. It is faster and transient, it is cleaner in, in sound, so yeah. Against the E2K, it's kind of like the the opposite, because it, this is a warm, like wide and warm and thick sounding. However, these are a bit thinner and a bit like brighter and a bit, like bo bo both of them are V-shaped, obviously. It's a bit taller, it's a bit... Yeah, shoutier, <laughs> I guess. I would still pick the E2K. Now this is an in-time Sora 2. I would probably make a review of these because I love these. It's also V-shaped. The bass doesn't dig, dig very deep. Also, it's very fast. It's a bit faster than the than the than the, than the Chimera. It's a bit more agreeable in the tuning also. Though the treble kind of bothers them here, well, not so much. I mean, the green in the treble, the, the grainy treble kind of bothers them here, while, while these don't, doesn't. While this is also sharp, sharper in the treble, in the treble proper, in the 8K region than the um, Sora 2. It's kind of quite a interesting I am, but not popular enough for me to really try to review them. The comparison between these would be in the review of the In Time Sora 2. So yeah, I guess that's it for the video. I hope you like it. I know it's, this one's kind of long also. Uh, I would I, once again thank HiFiGo for sending us this product. And however, even though I am not <laughs> praising this product because they don't deserve one hi if I go deserves one uh, for being so patient and yeah hope you like the video don't forget to watch Jason's video I'm not gonna put them there I'm gonna I'm not even gonna put them in the description just browse the channel you're gonna you're gonna see his video of these see you next time Godspeed